Uh, yes, uh, so basically this is a GPS system. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're dialing into base stations around the country um, using the internet and phone signal. Um, and by doing that we get centimetre accuracy on our survey results. Um, so we'll probably be taking a topographic survey of the site to see how the, how the land lays basically. Um, but more importantly we're here to locate um, the trenches. Um, so we go around with the GPS antenna and we can locate all the corners of the trenches um, so we can easily come back uh, if we want to and reopen the trenches um, and also it's good for recording what we find. Um, so when we get um, all the finds uncovered we can go around again and locate exactly where they are in the trenches, the, the heights as well. Um, what we're also doing is setting out a geophysics grid um, and we'll do a geophysics survey over this whole clearing as well to see if there's any other interesting anomalies that come out. Um, in theory, it's a lovely sample of the bottom of this, which is going to be like the last level that we're digging to in the can. So it'll be interesting to see what's inside. But um, it's been really annoying to get the sample just because it's yeah. been stony, muddy. So, so we tried to get a sample of cleave, which is at the bottom. Yeah, just in the case that's there. what. Yeah. yeah, that's what was wanted. Oh, that might be split. Down. We'll find out soon. And that will be chemically analysed, will it? Yep, so um, I'm assuming they're going to look at like sort of micro charcoal. I don't know if they're going to look at like um, sort of pollen, but that would be quite a good one. You can even try and see like um, uh, what the water was like in the area, but I think we're pretty certain it's been kind of the same. So, yeah, all in that bag of mud. <laughs> Uh, well, what we're doing is earth resistance survey, so we're essentially passing a small current underneath the ground um, and measuring how easily that current goes through the ground. Um, so this is very useful for especially structures like we've got in the clearing. Um, so if you've got a big stone structure underneath the ground, the, the current find it almost essentially harder to get through that material uh, and then we end up with a high resistance anomaly. Um, and by mapping all those anomalies out, we can start to make inferences to where other structures might be in the, in the soil. So I'm just going through the paperwork, so I'm going through the contact sheets, so every individual deposit that we excavate is given a number and every number has got a, an individual sheet which describes the colour, the consistency, whether it's silt, clay, sand, and has an interpretation um, to help us aid in the sort of post-excavation progress process. And we also have a, a matrix which is a, a series of numbers which tell us which deposits were laid down uh, in which order, basically. You, you try, try your best during the excavation to actually um, interpret what you're doing, but a lot of the actual, what will end up being reported does come in the post-excavation process. So you, when you have an opportunity to sit down, look at all your plans, look at all your records, uh, get all the finds together, um, then you can work out exactly what happened in, in a much more sort of sensible way than you can when you're in the middle of a field and it's raining. Um, so yeah, it does generally come, you, you try your best. When, when you're excavating, but it generally does come. The story evolves when you're, in, when you're, you're sitting down in an office somewhere going through the paperwork. I'm making a 3D photogrammetry model and I'm going to be um, running a program on my computer called Agisoft Photoscan and it will pretty much do it automatically through a series of steps and the idea is that I take lots of vertical, as near as vertical, although it's not essential, um, photos all over the trench and then, um, yeah, load them into the program and leave it running overnight and come back in the morning and it's completed stage one, etc. So, um, ideally, you don't want to have puddles in the trench, but it's... Uh, it's kind of inevitable at the moment because the water seeps up and the water's coming down from the sky a little bit as well. Um, and it has to be as sharp as possible. Um, the light's a little bit dark today, so it's not ideal. Also, um, overcast is good rather than sunny, so the shadows are not affecting it so much. So um, this is the final shot of trench three and I'll go and do it in trench one as well and I've done this 
um, five times, I think, in, tr in each trench. So re making a record of each stage of excavation. And uh, it's a bit like drawing a plan, but it, it, the camera does it for you, but it also creates a 3D model. And it's very clever. It's like wizardry. Um, I'll also take some more photographs inside the trench uh, of the edges, so I'll take some sideways shots and magically the program just knows the camera position and figures it all out. <laughs>